So you've made it out of rookie class. You're racing in the Skip Barber series with your new D license. And this is happening to you again and again. You need to learn how. Check out this slow-mo from Turn 1 at Alton Park and look at the throttle telemetry. Braking's done, we're turned in, but now we're applying stabilizing throttle well before we've even reached the apex in order to keep the skip held at the perfect angle of rotation. Simply put, if you don't put stabilizing throttle onto the skippy before you reach the corner apex, you're probably going to find that the rear is slipping a lot and half the time you're not going to catch it before it turns around on you. Now check out the left hander that comes straight afterwards. We brake, we gently turn the skippy in, and as the skip finds its angle of rotation, we add stabilizing throttle into the car before we've even reached the apex, and we carry it through near enough all the way. Until we reach the apex, we pick our corner exit point and we dump the throttle in for a fast exit. And as we watch this clip of the double right hander near the back end of the lap, the thing I want to stress is that the skippy is extremely nervous and twitchy unless you learn to introduce the throttle into the corner to help you stabilise it. The throttle is not just for corner exit, it's important to keep the car balanced. Because of the skippy's low downforce, when you're cornering hard, the rear tyres are only just clinging on. And if the rears are also having to cope with engine braking, because you're not on the throttle at all mid-corner, then that's usually the thing that tips it over the edge. And this is why the Skippy is such a good car to have to learn before you move on to the GTs or anything faster, because this throttle balancing is exaggerated in the Skippy due to its characteristics. Balancing the throttle through the corner is something that's explained extremely well in the Skip Barber book, Going Faster. So if you haven't picked that up yet and you're serious about your racing, go and get it. It's worth a read. And this is where the concept was first explained to me, and it really was a light bulb moment. If you're mid-corner and you're completely off the throttle, the balance of the car is not in the middle, it's not 50-50. Because of engine braking, there's two things that are happening. First of all, you are still slowing down slightly, so the weight is shifted to the front and your rears are lifting up ever so slightly. They're not lifting up off the ground, but they have less weight on them, less contact patch. Not only that, but because engine braking only acts upon the rear axle, it's basically like slightly pulling the handbrake. Obviously this is really complicated, there are loads of times where you'd want to use engine braking to help turn the car, but in the skippy this is exaggerated and it means that if you don't learn to use the throttle to balance the car through the corners, you're going to find it very nervous and easy to lose the back end in high speed corners as we saw earlier. So to counteract engine braking, which results in this combination of forces upon the skip barber in the mid turn, all you got to do is balance it out with your right foot by trickling a bit of throttle in you return the balance of the car back to 50 50. if you find yourself like these guys constantly having to use opposite lock and corrective steering to keep the skippy pointing the right way in a corner it's because you're not using stabilizing throttle or you may be backing out of the throttle too much in a high speed turn like in this last clip the throttle is so important to keeping the skippy stable and i am really confident that if you are struggling with the skippy after moving up from the MX-5s, it's because of this. So the next time you go out and practice, you need to try a few things differently. So the headline lesson of this video is to start introducing minimal throttle after you're braking before the apex, so you're carrying it through the corner. This is stabilizing throttle and serves the purpose of stopping that skip from feeling so nervous and light on the rear end. The skippy appreciates a gentle hand, so when you do turn, you need to gently release the brake and simultaneously gently wind the steering wheel into the corner. Any sudden movements can upset the balance of the car and result in a spin. A spin will only happen when the rear tyres have less grip than the front tyres, so try and visualise those rear wheels behind you when you're in the mid corner and how actions on the throttle will press them down into the ground ever so slightly when you balance it through the throttle. And lastly, don't give up because particularly if you've just come from the MX-5s where they're very forgiving, the skip is quite difficult to begin with. But believe me, once you master a few little techniques which include throttle balancing, the skip becomes an easy and rewarding car to drive, extremely fun. And every lesson that you learn in the seat of a skip is worth it. It's all carried on to the more powerful stuff 
further up the chain. And that's it for the video. I'm hoping that this helped you in some way or has shown you some information that you didn't already know that may then turn into a much easier time in a skip and more fun on iRacing generally speaking. If it helps you, let us, let us know in the comments below whether it actually did the trick. If it didn't, let me know what I've missed out and subscribe to me if you want to hear of any future videos like this that come out from me. And thank you very much.